You're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Four seconds left. Welcome in to RBLR Lightning here at RBLR Sports, where we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, even though the, the offseason is still right in the middle of things, there's not a lot of news that came out this week. Uh, there, there's not a lot of stuff going on, but there's always something to talk about here. With me, my name is Eureka, and with me, of course, are my two line mates. First of all, from the Bolt Report, that would be Jake Rickert. What's going on, big guy? Not so much, Eureka. Just hanging out, still waiting for hockey season to get started. We're getting closer and closer, so I cannot wait to get things underway and excited to talk some more hockey with you guys today. All right, man. And of course, also with us, we have a man who is a technical tester for NHL 22. That would be our own our own gamer guy, man. It's a, he's a he's a huge gamer. He's famous in that field, man. And that would be, of course, Chris Glazer. What's up, Chris? Uh, thanks, man. Uh, feeling good, man. You know, a little, little uh, rain today around the the city, so I was trying to stay dry. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to to hockey season coming up and uh, to a little bit of that uh, NHL uh, technical testing. And the game so far is uh, pretty smooth. So uh, looking forward to looking forward to NHL twenty two coming out and getting some more gaming time in and uh, ready to talk some lightning hockey. Well, dude, uh, I mean, are your thumbs like, are we going to have to put you on the injured list here? Uh, how, how are we doing? Nah, man, I got gaming thumbs. I, uh, you know, do the little thumb ups and uh, work your thumbs out and keep them ready to go at all times. Are you contractually obligated to not talk about uh, your experience with the game? Absolutely so not. I can talk about anything okay. about the game. All right. So, I mean, I know it's probably just a little beta test. Like, were you able, did you get to see more features or was it just like no rosters yet? Um, so okay. it was kind of disappointing cause I didn't know what to expect. So no rosters. And it, I was kind of assuming you might be able to, it, it might set up like a, a lightning versus Canadians matchup, kind of like a Stanley cup, you know, maybe like a, just a quick play game, which usually they do that sometimes for the demos, but, uh, it's just kind yeah. of a, yeah, chill mode where you, you create your own guy and you're a little, you go three V three on some, uh, pond hockey, but, um, uh, okay. I, I was playing on my PS five, so I was getting to test out the new, uh, new gen stuff. So, um, it, it, this is the first time it's been on the new gen console, um, yeah. being like specifically for the PS5. So it, it ran really smooth though, really clean, really crisp. Um, definitely looking forward to playing it. Were you playing AI or were you playing? Uh, was it like versus a, an opponent? Like yes, a it, opponent? yeah, it was all AI. You could kind of set your difficulty and give yourself a little challenge if you wanted to. But um, okay. yeah, it was it was just all AI. And how how do you feel it was responsive versus the last gen? Definitely. I mean, it's hard to say right now, but with just being able to play a little bit of it, I would say it's definitely an upgrade. Um, obviously, mm. they got time to tune errors and tune glitches. And usually when the games come out, usually there is a little bit of, you know, some bugs or glitches right away just because, you know, they they miss stuff when they're testing it out. So hopefully I'm sure. hoping that um, I'm hoping that there's some kind of thing at the end where I can kind of send in some feedback to them. Um, I think that would be pretty cool to just give them some feedback and see uh, when it actually comes out, if there's any changes to the game itself. Yeah, no, when I was beta testing uh, a game recently, they had a whole Discord server set up and they encouraged us to get in there and and talk about it with kind of the with with the other people that were testing the game. So um that was one way that I, I liked it. So maybe, I mean, hopefully EA, I mean, I don't know how many, did, do you know how many people were, you were testing with? I don't. Um, I, I okay. somehow I ended up, I think I was just looking up when the game was coming out and I ended up on some site where it was saying, sign up here to be a, a tester. And, uh, they just, all you had to do is put in your email and then they email me a code. So, um, it didn't say a specific amount though. Okay. Well, uh, Jake and and I and you are, are going to be talking about a different game, and that is a simulated series that we put together. Uh, we had the, the old school uh, cup winners from the, the 04 Stanley Cup against one of the two new... I, I didn't really know which 
which team to pick in the back-to-back run. Very similar rosters. So the only way to do it was to actually have them uh, battle it out. So we inevitably what we wanted to do was have a Stanley Cup champion of champions. So who was going to face the 0304 team? Well, they had to play each other first. So we took the the I'm going to call the 19 the 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 2020 team. We'll call them the Bubble Cup uh, because everyone wants to talk rag on us that uh, oh we won the easiest Stanley Cup. Well, if that was true. Why didn't anyone else win it? And uh, and just in that same vein, we'll call the the 21 Stanley Cup champion the Cap Circumvention team, right? Uh, for similar reasons. So uh, what we did is we we had them play a Stanley Cup format uh, on a on a cool website called WhatIfSports.com, where you can go and and pit pretty much any team from any era in in multiple different sports. So if you wanted to know what uh, Gordy Howe would do against uh, uh, Vasilevsky, you can absolutely put those teams together in, in, in combat. So, well, the, 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 at the end of the, the series between the two new school teams, it took six games, but it was the Bubble Cup team, it was the 2020 champions that win on the road in a tight two to one game that went into overtime, but uh, they ended up winning the series four games to two and advanced to what we will be talking about tonight, and that is the Stanley Cup champion of champions. So first of all, I'll bring it up, Jake. Uh, what If you could open up a portal and we could have the 2003-2004 champions uh, skate through and we're in Amelie Arena and it's going to be the old school team, Brad Richards, right? Uh, Nikolai Abi Boulin, uh, you know, all these, Martin St. Louis, right? Against our... Bubble Cup champions, which pretty similar, but you got Kucherov, you got Point, you've got Vasilevsky, right? I mean, Hall of Famers all the way around, uh, and definitely retired numbers on on both sides. Uh, eventually, what's going to stand out is like your main uh, matchups that you're looking for. Man, this would be a, a really fun matchup to watch if it only could happen in real life. But <laughs> um, you know, I, there's you mentioned it. The, the obviously the Bubble Cup team has got so much superstar talent on paper. I think they're definitely the better team. But I mean, you know, just because you have good superstar talent doesn't mean you're going to win games. One of the most important positions in hockey is the goaltender position, and that's one I would have a ton of fun uh, and be definitely interested in because, you know, obviously Andre Vasilevsky is the best goalie right now in the NHL. He's been just tearing it up all over. He makes unbelievable acrobatic saves all the time. But Nikolai Javi Bullen uh, in that 04 run, I mean, he was on another level himself. He was a really, really good goaltender for the Lightning, and he was a big part of the reason that the Bolts were able to ultimately win the Stanley Cup in 2004. So I'd be really interested to see which goalie could actually come out on top. I think you'd have a lot of close games, uh, even with all of the superstar talent that both these teams had. Chris, what are you looking forward to if we had to pit these guys on the ice at Emily Arena? I would have to say I'd probably be looking forward to how the defenses would stop stop the offense because mm-hmm. I feel like that's yeah. these teams are loaded with firepower, you know. Um, so I I think I'd be most interested in just the general game of defense versus offense um, all around because th- these these teams, you know, you're looking at guys like St. Louis, Le Calvier, you know, like you said, Richards, and then you got guys like uh, Sorelli, and then you got guys like Point and Cooch and all these just talented starters together, I, it would definitely be interesting to see um, how how would these defenses be able to, you know, not fold and, and, and give up big plays and big goals. So, um, obviously, I think that that's, I mean, man, it's just cool to talk about, you know, just sitting here <laughs> thinking about it. It's pretty neat to, to be able to, to talk about something like this. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, it, it would definitely be a, a crazy matchup, uh, and it would definitely be interesting to, to watch. All right, well, let's get right into it. All right, so the game one, we had, uh, we gave we gave the old timers the uh, the benefit of the doubt. We let them be the home team first. So what we'll do is we'll play the first two games with the uh, old school team as the home team. Then we'll go, uh, we'll switch uh, uh, <laughs> locker rooms, and we'll let the new school guys, the Bubble Cup, be the home team for game three and four. And then they'll alternate uh, for as many games as they want. So. We'll go ahead and simulate game one here, here at whatifsports.com, and it is a 4-2 to two victory 
for the Bubble Cup team. The new guys come out firing in the first period with two goals. Alex Kalorn sc- scores six minutes into the game. Uh, Kucherov in point, I mean, that's a hell of a line. They get it done very early. And then Anthony Sorelli, you know, he didn't score a lot during this season, but he comes through with a with a, 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 a goal that brings them up two to nothing. Shattenkirk and Chernak are your assisting people there. And then the then the old school team they kind of shoot themselves in the foot with a two minute penalty and that leads uh, it doesn't lead to a goal but uh, it leads to a deficit for two nothing after the first period but then but then here they come the old school guys roaring back four minutes into the second period Corey Stillman gets a rebound uh, Brad Richards fires it on net and Corey Stillman's able to to get the rebound and score a goal and then David Andrichuk. Davies right behind him. Uh, about ten minutes later, they score and tie the game. Uh, another just the, the the we could see that the way the old school team was trying to get in there is fire pucks at Vasilevsky, get those rebounds in front of the net, and they tied the game. Uh, but then, you know, uh, Cedric Paquette has a little bit of a uh, little bit of something to say, and he brings the new school team up again with a Stamkos and Shattenkirk assist. So uh, going into the final frame, you've got a three-two lead, and they're able to hold on. Nikita Kucherov comes right out of the locker room, thirty-one seconds into the third period, and puts away the the winner. So it's four to two. Your final score, the Bubble Cup guys. Uh, so. I know Chris was saying, you know, you, you'd, you'd want to see how the defense is able to to hold these guys, but uh, it didn't work out in game one for the for the old timers here. Yeah, honestly, a lot higher scoring than, you know, I think I thought it would have been, especially with the two goalies as I was talking about before. I see here, too, you have both teams with 30 shots on goal, which is a, mm. a pretty insane mm. number there as well. So yeah. I don't know if the defense was sleeping in this game or what, but it seems like uh, it was the goalies who really had to pull majority of the weight there. And interesting that the, uh, the, the bubble cup team got off to the quick start there. And then it was the old guys were able to rebound, uh, but weren't able to hold <laughs> on to it. I mean, but you know, it kind of makes sense. Cause you know, the, the Bubble Cup team on paper just has so much superstar talent. And just like we've seen in real life, even when you get a chance to shut these guys down and maybe start to come back on them a little bit, you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Uh, Chris, one thing I, I noticed that maybe you could shine some insight on, this was kind of odd because uh, the Bubble Cup team wasn't, I mean, they weren't in zero penalties on them uh, where the uh, – you know, maybe that in real life, maybe the computer's uh, giving them a little bit more leeway. But the one power play between the two teams, uh, that was that was pretty interesting. Was there anything else that you had seen in the box score that was kind of interesting in this game? I was taking a look at the the shooting percentage, man. That's a that's a pretty big gap from the the Bubble Cup team with thirteen point three, and then the the old guys with six point seven. Uh, that's a that's a big time shooting percentage difference. So. Um, but they still both ended with 30 shots, so that, that's that's definitely interesting. Um, I was just looking at a lot of the guys um, with the shots on goals. You had what is it, five shots for Cooch, so he was firing away. Five shots, five shots for Sorelli, so Sorelli was trying to get on the scoreboard for yeah. once, you know. Um, and then uh, you had you know you had four shots for Dave Andrzejczyk, four shots for Richards, and then and then even Pavel Kubina back then. Look at that, three shots for Kubina. So. Um, it, it definitely looks like both teams kind of spread the love around as far as, you know, everyone taking shots. Um, but yeah, the, the shooting percentage definitely it caught my eye the most. Well, we talked about uh, Pavel Kubina, and he's the first guy that gets on the board in game number two. Uh, game number two, a back-and-forth game here. So first we have the old-school team getting on the board with eight minutes into the first period, and that's uh, Martin St. Louis gets a nice little assist there. But... Uh, two minutes later, Nikita Kucherov with Point and Kalorn assisting tie the game back up. And then uh, we have another goal. So the, the Bubble Cup team now extends the lead with another goal in the first period. Yanni Gord assisted by Pat Maroon and Sergachev. And then we have a couple of, uh, well, here we go, the, the, the old school team. Gets a two-minute penalty. Nolan Pratt uh, gives up a power play to end, and uh, you know he's uh, 
he roughs up a little bit of Steven Stamkos. Maybe maybe the old school guys are trying to get uh, to the, the glass hammer and maybe take him out of the series here. Uh, but that pretty much is all the scoring action we see until period three, where Vanilla Cavier, man, scores a goal eight minutes into the third period to tie the game, and it isn't until the 18th minute of the game where Kevin Shattenkirk is able to get an assist from Braden Point to bring home game two and a two-game series lead for the Bubble Cup guys. Uh, this was a, a little bit, uh, when I'm looking at the shots by period, in the first game it was kind of like uh, pretty even in the first, and then the, the teams kind of alternated. In this game, very close, uh, but it wasn't until that third period where the Bubble Cup team was able to kind of just uh, almost double the shots on goal and and inevitably put one in the back of the net that, that takes a two-game series lead. Um, Jake, what did you see out of the box score with this one? A much tighter game in this one. I mean, you know, it was only a two goal difference in the in the first one. You only get a one goal difference in game number two here. Uh, still, again, a lot of shots, even more shots than the last game. You had yeah. 38 yeah. shots for the Bubble Cup team and 33 shots for the 04 team. So, um, interesting that the, these both these teams have had so many shots. So, definitely a lot more penalties in this one as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting to me that it was the. 14 that took majority of the penalties i feel like if there was a team that was going to take more penalties it would be the bubble cup team i know that's one thing i think we you know we kind of talked about all the time was that the lightning i don't know for whatever reason these newer teams love to take penalties and that's the other thing too that could be also due to you know the way they've changed the rules because you know these two teams played very different games when you think about it um Mm. especially with some of the rule changes that happened over the all these years as well so that's probably why maybe the bubble cup team tends to get called more penalties nowadays, but Hey yeah. man, that superstar talent still just coming through. Uh, but it's interesting. Some of the goal scorers that we've seen from the O four team too, like Vinny, uh, Dave in the last game, those, those veterans really pulling through for that O four team and keeping this game close. Well, and here you go. Yeah. Dan Boyle has 54 shifts in the game. He has, uh, I mean, it's killer. I mean, he spent over 25 minutes on the ice to lead everyone on the whole team. Uh, but Victor Hedman was was pretty much on the ice for every second that Boyle was on the ice. So uh, you have a pretty good pretty good matchup there between guys that we I mean obviously we all love here. Uh, Chris, do you think this is uh, this is shocking that the new uh, Bubble Cup team has a two game advantage now? No, not at all. Um, I, I, obviously, the team's super talented, so I wouldn't expect uh, anything less from this uh, this Bubble Cup team. But what is surprising is look at the look at the penalty kill, 100% on both sides. So <laughs> the, the, the strong power plays of our teams were both getting shut down by the by the defense and the PK, which PKs on both teams are pretty strong. So that's that's definitely something interesting right there. No, you know, no no power play goals allowed in a, in a playoff game. So. Uh, looks like the refs were a little, little whistle happy for for a playoff game too. So, what was that five penalties called? It looks like total. So I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's it's that's quite a bit for you know a Stanley Cup series game anyway. Um, so a little, little high on the penalties. Like you said, time on ice for Dan Boyle, man, twenty five minutes. He was <laughs> he was skating circles out there, man. But Dan Boyle was was a fun guy to watch. Real, real speedy. Uh, good, good, good shooting defenseman, man. He was. He was a great player for us, but uh, yeah, this is this is definitely uh, definitely interesting stuff. Now, game some of these three, time on uh, ice. Sorry, sorry, dude. Sorry, you're there, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Some go of ahead. these time on ice just surprised me too. Like Nikita Kucherov, 15 minutes. I feel like he would have played a little bit more. Even a uh, uh, Marty only at uh, 16 minutes mm. of ice time. So interesting that some of even these uh, these top forwards for these guys had lower time on ice. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just the way that this uh, this particular simulation software, how they rotate forwards in. Uh, you, I mean, we can actually look uh, play by play. It'll tell you exactly when they're uh, uh, winning faceoffs and, and making line changes. And that's why I use it, because it's pretty in-depth and, and, and pretty pretty comprehensive it makes some fun fun things to talk about you know uh, what if sports.com is a cool place you know what if what if jordan versus lebron kind of thing or or all these kind of cool teams and you can even make dream teams and put uh, guys together so it's it's pretty fun to do that let's let's move on here uh you know game let's see where are we we've got a two game lead 
So, so if you're you're going into this and you're you're down two games to nothing, I I don't know. It, it, and you just lost these two games at home. Now you're technically going on the road as the uh, you're gonna have the long uh, change now on the ice as the road team. Uh, how would you hope to see them respond? You know, uh, Chris, like like what do you do, man? How how would you be if you were the 04 team? How do you attack this new team? You gotta you, you gotta get in front of Vassy and create some traffic, man. You gotta you gotta get in front of him and get some deflections and some traffic, because if he if he's got a clear lane, man, he, more than likely Vassy's gonna make those saves. And I would I would give the edge to Vassy in this goalie matchup if this series ever was to happen. Um, I'm not taking anything anything away from the the bull and wall, man, as they used to call him. Uh, I, I, I he's he was great that year, um, but I think Vassy's a little more on the consistent side, so. I think getting pucks past Vassy would would be the biggest uh, ordeal for the for the old school guys. So I think you'd have to get in front of the net. You got to take a lot of shots. You got to get your rebounds, um, and then you got to play defense, obviously, and shut this team down. So you you'd have to play you have to play a really complete game of hockey to take out this uh, Bubble Cup team. Jake, are you surprised that the the new school team is uh, is is up so? Com- I mean, it hasn't been like a like. Do, super dominating, but they have uh, they kind of done when it when it whatever it took. Yeah, I mean it's it surprised me a little bit. I mean, like you said, the games were kind. Of, I mean, you had the one game that was a one goal game, and the other one was a two goal game. Uh, so not like huge blowout leads, uh, uh, but you know, still, you'd think that the O four team would be able to be with them right there, neck and neck, the whole way through. But I guess it just proves how good Andre Vasilevsky is, and how much of a difference he makes. I mean, he's been making all these stops against these guys. Well, that leads us into game uh, number four, which was an absolute blowout. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the the old school team gets blown out as they uh, play their first game as the road team, and it's a five to nothing thrashing. I mean, but but you're looking at, I mean, thirty shots on goal for this team. Uh, not that the old school team they had twenty eight, so they they were trying to fire back, but uh, we had. You know, uh, there was uh, Stamkos had a, had a, an assist to Carter uh, Verhage, uh, a ton of penalties uh, between both teams. I mean, we had five penalties in this game, just like the other game, and it just it really couldn't just put anything past Vasilevsky. Vasi ends up having 28 saves on 28 shots, and just I mean. Uh, amazing and uh, unfortunately, Hobby Bullen, 30 shots on goal, 25 saves. So that's five goals behind him. Uh, not gonna work when you're when you're already down in a series. These guys just came out firing. Kalorn had a goal. Sorelli had a goal. Uh, Tyler Johnson had a power play goal. Even Pat Maroon at the very end of the game, in the 19th minute of the game, scores a goal to just. I mean, uh, I'd have to look and see if that's a uh, an empty netter or or if they actually pulled. Uh, when it, did they pull him? No, they did not. It was a, it was not an empty netter. So, man, just an onslaught. So, I mean, there's really not much to say other than coming into the these last games. You're now on the brink. You're now only one game away. You want to see the old school guys at least get something on the board, and that's exactly what happened in the very next game. We're gonna skip right to it. This is a five to four. Just an ama- this, this is probably one of the greatest games that's ever been played of hockey, if, if you're looking at this. Um, so, <laughs> let, let's break this down. The, the, o, the, the old school team takes a two-goal commanding lead in the first period with Pavel Kubina and Dave Anderchuk goals. But then the new school team comes back with a, I mean, just an amazing second period where... They end up out shooting uh, the old school team by four shots, and they score two goals of their own. Uh, and, but Mart- Martin Saint Louis was able to get a goal in the middle there. So after two periods, it's three to two in favor of the uh, of the old school team. But you, you know, Steven Stamkos c- comes roaring back with a with a goal. Uh, Pat Maroon scores a goal right at the end of the period. And so we have another just cra- I mean this would be insane. Okay. Period 3 starts. Brad Richards comes in 25 seconds into the period and scores a goal to go up 4 to 2, but then th- 3 minutes later Steven Stamkos comes in, scores a goal. But then 
Brad Richards comes in again with another third period goal. Uh, Martin St. Louis, another assist for him. The Lightning uh, with the old school bolts are up four, uh, what are we, five to three right now. Andre Vasilevsky is pulled in the in the middle of the third period. They put McElhaney in, and then, oh my God, and then it almost works. It almost works. Nikita Kucherov scores a goal. The Lightning are now, or the, the, the Bubble Cup Lightning are only one goal away. And they even had a they even had a, a shot because uh, we had a, a little bit of a power play to end the game. But uh, at the end of it, the old school guys were able to snag victory from the jaws of defeat. They were able to not get sent home packing in a four game sweep. Uh, just insanity. If you're looking at this box score, it's just back and forth, and other t- everyone's scoring. We have 39 shots on goal for both teams, almost 80 shots in a game. That would be insane. And and it, there was almost no defense to talk about. Massive penalties, tons of scoring. Is this the kind of hockey that we would want to watch on TV, Jake? It would definitely be entertaining. I think most people enjoy uh, high-scoring kinds of games, and that's what you get right here with this game, no question about it. And, man, there's a lot of interesting things that uh, Bring it. that happen in, in this one. I mean, I, I think my favorite thing, honestly, happened at the end of the game, Pat Maroon with a five-minute major for elbowing, <laughs> and he gets a <laughs> 10-minute misconduct. You know, you got to think about yep. what player safety have suspended Pat Maroon here. I don't know how bad that elbow was, but I mean, a five minute major, 10 minute misconduct. That is, that is one. But I mean, that's, that's Pat Maroon. I could totally see him getting a penalty like that. Um, and then Andre Vasilevsky getting pulled, John Cooper pulled. Uh, making the ultimate <laughs> move right there. That, that is just craziness right there. I mean, oh, I, I don't man. think we would ever, ever see that in, in today's world. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. some, some kind of, you know, uh, Marvel multiverse multiverse going on in here, <laughs> but entertaining game, man. Hey, good for the the O four guys though to pull out the win there. They get the job done at the end of the day, and man, all this this scoring talent right here is just coming out in waves. And it, it, that that was an entertaining game for sure. The, you mentioned the shots, thirty nine shots for each team. That is Jesus. holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, Chris, if 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 uh. If it's a five to three game and they pulled Vasil- uh, uh, Vasilevsky, I mean, that, I, I don't know where the computer is, is thinking that that would happen, but uh, it's, I mean, it's crazy, man. Uh, what did you see out of all this scoring back and forth, tons of shots, tons of penalties, tons of everything? Uh, I mean, it, and, and otherwise, the statistics are pretty even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm just. I'm cracking up over here the way Jake said it because there's no way in the world Vassy would ever get pulled from McElhaney in a playoff game. I don't care if Vassy's, Vassy's staying in, but look at look at um look at the ejections. They actually ejected Pat Maroon, which is wild. Yeah. That's game yeah. misconduct ejection. And then look at the if you look at the plus minus on the the uh, Bubble Cup team, negative two for Point, negative three for Sorelli, negative three for Cobra, negative three for McDonough, negative two for Galorn. <laughs> Negative two for Kucherov, negative three for Palat, negative three for Joseph. That's crazy, man. Yeah. All those yeah. plus minus is negatives. This is this is would be one of those games where you would be you would oh I hate hockey. Oh I love hockey. You would be going back and forth. <laughs> um it, this this would be a stress this game's gonna be stressed right now just thinking about it, honestly. My anxiety's high just thinking <laughs> about this game literally happening in front of me. So uh this is this is definitely uh this is definitely a game that I would uh love to actually probably be Probably be live to see. This would be a good good live game to go watch. Yeah, and looking, uh, I, I think one thing to look at, if you look at face-offs one, Sorelli, he's got that negative three plus minus, but also only winning 27% of his face-offs. I mean, he lost eight face-offs in this game. Uh, that would... That would not be good. The only person that had a worse than that was, oh, and he still had a better uh, percentage overall. Brad Richards losing nine, but still was able to come away with about thirty six percent of his faceoffs. So, uh, I mean, not a good game overall for the centers uh, <laughs> overall at the faceoffs, but tons of scoring, man, tons of penalties. It would have been crazy. So, uh, the 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 last game that we'll talk about because unfortunately uh, it was the closeout game. It's a four to two victory for your 
how do I say this? They're they're the first team at the back to back, right? I don't know. There's not like a there's not there's not like a, a there's, word there's not for a that, good right? way it, to put it. I mean, how do you say it? the first team of a back to back? Yeah. Anyway, but they uh, they they close this out. They are the Stanley Cup champion of champions with a four to two victory. Uh, again, Stamkos. He's been early and off in this entire series. He scores two minutes, and that's on the first shift. He comes in. They score a goal, uh, but Brad Richards ties the game just three minutes later. So they're not going down without a fight. Unfortunately, uh, it was pretty much all of the bubble cup after that. Uh, I mean, Kalorn comes in with eight minutes into the first period. They score a goal, and they never give up the lead from there. It, it isn't until the third period that uh, the, the Corey Stillman's able to put another one on the board, but by that time, Braden Point had already scored, and Tyler Johnson seals the deal with about 15 minutes to go with a two-goal lead. And I mean, they they just they they brought all the firepower. They they lost by one goal. They gave up the one. You know, they gave up the little gentleman sweep uh, a loss, and they were not having it. Coop was coming out firing. I'm sure, as as you see, uh, you see a well structured team with no penalties. They outshot the old school guys, and, and they were even on the power play two times. Uh, even though they didn't score, they they just they owned the puck. They, they won the face-off battles, and they in, inevitably won the series. Chris, uh, is this kind of how you saw this, this playing out with the, with the new school guys, uh, with a gentleman's sweep against the old school team? Yeah, and the only reason, I like I said, I would pick uh, the bubble team is because I think Vassy is a better goalie. And I think really when it comes down to, you know, big time moments and big time games and playoff games and Stanley Cup games, I think... I think a lot of it relies on on your goalie, and I think I think I would give the edge to Vassy uh, over Bullen. Uh, like I said, not taking anything away from Bullen, he was great for us, but Vassy is phenomenal, and and I think that's really what it would come down to is the goalie matchup, and uh, obviously <laughs> obviously Vassy getting pulled would probably motivate him a lot uh, to win this game on, on home ice. So um, I, I would definitely go with the. The goalie matchup and 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 giving the edge to Vasi, so I, I'm not surprised that the the cup to uh, the, yeah the 2019 team won this. Uh, Jake with a with another performance in this game, uh, they just they came out firing and they did not let go. And even when the the old school guys had a response, it wasn't enough. Is that is that kind of how you 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 figured this going? I mean, I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me with the new guys winning it, but, you know, I thought it would be a little bit closer just because of all the superstar talent and both teams have been really good. I mean, these are, these are pretty, cl- I think on paper, the, the bubble cup team is a little bit better, but, you know, I thought maybe you would have seen the older guys, the 04 team win at least one more game. Um, but I mean, you know, as Chris mentioned, it, it was really Ken and Andre Vasilevsky. I mean, we saw how both these teams had the ability to score tons of goals, um, but it was Andre Vasilevsky that was able to keep that 4 team behind the, the in most of these games. So he was the true difference maker in this. Although I don't know, man. I think the 4 team might be contesting this result because uh, Pat Maroon was not suspended for this game. So, you know, I think that could have been the difference maker there, even though he had zero shots uh, in the game. So... <laughs> Uh, the, the limitations of the software, for sure. Uh, I, I love that you picked that up. That's good. Um, well, the uh, I mean, if you were that old school team, um, do you think they'd get? You, you think they would maybe play a little more rough and rugged, or I mean, how, how do you think they say they got to see the film, right? Of of like some of the teams, like Florida, was able to really do some things like that against us. Um, you know, do you think they would have changed the way that they played in order to 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 maybe change the the scoring dynamic and and make up for some of that? Yeah, I mean, I want to say deficiency, but you got Vasilevsky, who's probably one of the best, if not the best of all time. Uh, so you kind of have to do something different, right? Yeah, I think you definitely see the O four team play a more physical game, just because that's the way it was back then. And the the newer new guys, the uh, I keep saying new guys, but you know, the, I know I'm sorry. I keep I keep forgetting. Like I don't know how to really say, but that's why I was like Bubble Cup yeah, was the, the best way. Anyway, to really the put Bubble it. Cup team, they you know they're definitely a faster, more speedier team. They they have that grit, which you know as we've talked about, they added because that was something a lot of people talked about was their biggest issue. 
um, mm-hmm. coming into but when they haven't hadn't won a cup yet. Um, so, you know, that's something you know that could be a topic for another day, and it is a big question. It would be interesting to see, you know, if we go back and take the 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 2019 team that got swept out of the first round, you know, would they have been able to beat this 04 team as easily as this new team Ooh. team? Is that really the difference there Ooh. was the, the grit that they added, you know, who knows? Um, but I think you definitely see that 04 team play more of that style. And it, honestly, it, that's probably a tougher style of hockey to play um, in today's NHL, just because so many guys are so fast and have that speed and elusiveness um, that, that these these old guys didn't have as much. Uh, Chris, what were you, what, after we, we've kind of gone through this whole thing, um, what, what do you think they got wrong? What do you think this, this simulation kind of, uh, it was really silly about, and, and maybe uh, if, if this were really played on ice, what do you think the difference would be versus this virtual simulation? Um, I think you could definitely see it go in seven, seven games because obviously the Lightning don't lose back to back. So, uh, <laughs> someone would have to here. So I think that'd be interesting. Um, probably go seven, uh, if they seemed really met up. And I think, I don't, I don't, man, it'd be tough to have a shutout. I think with these teams for either goalie, uh, one of that game that was five, nothing. I can't, I don't think I could see that happening. It's possible, but with the firepower of these guys, I feel like the, the scores of the games would be a lot closer um, because both teams are super talented from top to bottom. So uh, I think I think the series would be closer. I think it will go seven. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I think it would uh, definitely be a closer series. I kind of think it'd be the opposite. I, I was expecting at least one of these games to be zero to one, and like they maybe scored at the, at the you know at the end of the period at the second or something of like that and then held on to to win the game like that's that's the kind of game i think that would happen with all this superstar talent kind of not canceling each other out but i mean you get if you're the the coaching element i think is the what's missing in this kind of simulation we we kind of throw a bunch of guys into a computer and spit out some numbers but in real life the coaching things and knowing kind of where to put your pieces here and there. And, you know, uh, maybe it is kind of roughing up a guy like they, you know, uh, they got a penalty against Stamkos. Maybe it is roughing up a Maroon to get him mad and then get him ejected for a game. It's those little coaching things that I think would have overall been the difference. And for that, I, I, I mean, it's tough, but I think Cooper's, uh, Cooper's one of the better coaches that we've seen win, and I mean, he's won back-to-back cups, so I mean, here we go, but I mean, maybe that would be my big difference between the old school team and the new team, but like, new school team, so uh, maybe that's what I thought was missing, is is on the flip side, uh, it was a 0-1, to one, just like, grinded out, low shooting, because they just couldn't get possession in the four check, you couldn't, you couldn't really get anything going, and it was maybe like the uh, uh, a power play difference or something like that 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 slipped one in, and because you see that kind of these, uh, expe- especially in like series clinching games where you know the team is fighting for everything they have to get uh, to to see what they can do to to move on and things like that. I, I think you'd get a lot of those kind of games in the, in a back and forth, very close matchup like we had. So. All right, well, uh, guys, listeners, you you making it this far, we appreciate you. You are the star of the show. You are what keeps this going. And and we ask for one thing out of you, and that's if you're on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we are at RBLR Sports. Every single week, we keep getting more and more and more followers. You know, if, if you're already followed, share it. You know, share the spread the word, man. We 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 enjoy giving you five star content, and I hope that's what we are giving you each and every. Every week, no matter what you're listening to us on, if you're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, you name it, we uh, we got you every single week, not just for the Lightning, but also the Rays, the Locks, the Rowdies. Boom, we got it. Uh, Jake, final thoughts for us before we get out of here? It was a fun little thing to mess around with, you know. I, I'm definitely going to have to go on this website and mess around myself and have some fun with it as we... Uh, continue to await hockey season, but I cannot wait. Hopefully, we uh, maybe get some Stanley Cup rings to talk about very soon. Ooh, maybe. Ooh. So looking Ooh. looking forward to that. But you know, just cannot wait for this next season and going for a third 
Stanley Cup, which would be just absolutely crazy. Chris, man, what you got for us? Uh, give us final thoughts. You have the last word. Give us a good old go bolts on the way out, bud. Um, man, you know, just enjoyed this. This was fun. This made me laugh, which is cool, man. Uh, this was definitely something interesting. I'm glad we could talk about the past and the present and still be able to talk about our team winning Stanley Cups from that long ago and now to this day, which is which is pretty neat, man, because, you know, in my lifetime, I didn't know if I'd ever get to see a Stanley Cup, but uh, I've seen three. So uh, this has been this has been really good. Um, I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a, a fourth Stanley Cup uh, this is coming up season. I think we got a great team, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely ready for uh, for hockey season to come come around and, and watch some lightning hockey. So go Bulls, baby! Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.